one of the simplest way to have oscillations of an object is hang it with a thread and tie the other end of the thread at some place and just pull this object and leave it. So, that is how simple pendulum oscillates. In simple pendulum, you have a thread and then a mass and the this end of the thread is fixed. You pull this mass on one side and leave and it oscillates. So, at a certain time if it is here and if this angle is theta then it will and you leave it from here then it goes like this and comes like this. So, it oscillates on an arc of this circle. How do we get the expressions for time period? We write equations of motion. If you take angular position as your variable, then uh, you have uh, force mg and here is the axis of rotation. So, you take torque about that and that will be mg into L into sin theta that is the torque of this mg and it uh, it will try to decrease this theta here. So, this is mg L sin theta in the opposite direction and that should be equal to I alpha and I will be moment of inertia will be mass times length square. Remember here is the axis of rotation. So, this distance is L. So, it is ML square times d 2 theta d t square. And then you say that uh, theta is small. So, sin theta can be written as theta and then it is d 2 theta d t square is equal to minus g by L theta and hence omega is square root of g by L. And if you need time period, it is 2 pi by omega and that is 2 pi square root L by g. The standard equation, the standard formula for time period of a simple pendulum that one studies in uh, uh, schools. Now, it is always said that uh, you oscillate the pendulum with small amplitude and most of the textbook says that your amplitude should be within 4 degrees. Uh, what is so special about 4 degrees I cannot say, but that is the kind of number it is mentioned and that comes from this approximation. In place of sin theta, we are writing theta and then uh, you get this expression and this will be uh, better and better if, you, if this theta is small because sin theta you know sin theta you can expand as theta minus theta cube over 3 factorial and so on. So, if you are writing sin theta equal to theta that means you are neglecting this theta cube in front of theta or you are neglecting theta square by 6 in front of 1. So, that is the place where this approximation is needed and that is why this formula is valid for small amplitudes. But if I exceed that 4 degree limit, if I go for 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, how much will be the difference? So, let us uh, uh, measure it with uh, a simple pendulum which is not that simple in fact and see how much is the difference if I increase the theta this amplitude much beyond that 4 degrees or 5 degrees limit that textbook say. So, let us look at this pendulum. So, here I have this uh, pendulum, a thread is here and from this thread a ball is hanging is the same ball with which uh, children play in, in lanes, cricket and all other games. And to measure the time period, we can have, we, we can use a stopwatch. So, I will be using uh, this uh, mobile stopwatch to measure time.
time of say uh, 10 oscillations. So, let me first oscillate with small amplitude. So, when it comes to this side, I will start the stopwatch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, in 10 oscillations, it took 12.6 seconds. Small amplitude ten oscillations and it took twelve point seven seconds. Twelve point six seconds. Now, let me oscillate it with a large amplitude. So, I am pulling it to a large angle. This angle although I am not measuring, but must be more than 45 degrees and I will leave it from here. Once again, here it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 seconds, 13.0 13 seconds. So, large amplitude, ten oscillations. 13.0 second. But you do not have to believe this data because starting the stopwatch, stopping the stopwatch right at the time when this ball is extreme, that synchronization, all these things may involve errors, and those errors are typically of the order of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds. So, essentially you should uh, do several measurements, 3, 4 measurements at least and see if there is a variation and there will be variation if you do the experiment and then take the average value. If the variation is very large then you have to improve your experimental skills. But if the variation is within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds then you can take average value 3, 4, 5 readings and then you can get what is the time period for small amplitudes, what is the time period for larger amplitudes, you can perform this experiment as a function of amplitude, how it changes and all that. So, if you do a proper mathematical analysis without making this approximation that sin theta is same to same as theta, you can uh, get an expression for time period which is uh, a better uh, presentation and if you do this analysis, you solve this differential equation, what you get is your time period is something like t equals t naught which is this and times 1 plus alpha square by 16 and then higher or higher powers. So, if you take alpha equal to 1 and what is that alpha? Alpha is the amplitude, this amplitude. So, alpha is 1 radian and 1 radian you know how many it is uh, 180, 180 degrees is pi radian. So, if you take this as 3.14 radian or so, 1 radian means 180 degrees divided by 3.14, so something like 57 degrees. So, at alpha equal to 1, it is 
a huge amplitude 57 degrees of amplitude and even then this will be 1 by 16 1 by 16 is 6 percent 6 percent of error and later terms will be uh, even even more smaller so that is how the amplitude variation time period variation with amplitude takes place now it will be your task to construct a simple pendulum and uh, measure the time period for different amplitudes and see that how it varies and whether it uh, agrees with this or you need even more terms now to start a pendulum itself is a very skillful job if you think that uh, i just uh, pull it and leave it see what happens if i just pull it and leave it see what kind of jerky motion it starts with so the one of the efficient ways is that you take some kind of a textbook or a notebook and then push this ball to whatever amplitude you want and then move this notebook rapidly in the opposite direction and see how smoothly it goes so the idea is that we when we release it it should have v equal to 0 theta is equal to the amplitude and then it should start with v equal to 0 and for that you do not have to apply any force on this so gently remove this so that this contact is broken and it goes in a much smoother path so we have always assumed that this ball moves in a vertical plane so it's just a two dimensional motion we don't think that it goes in transverse direction and that's perfect if my initial conditions are initial displacement is in this vertical plane and if the velocity is zero then sure it will go in this direction because there is no force on the transverse direction so what happens if i give it an initial transverse velocity then it has to move in this plane and what do you expect you have in general a motion in this plane at the same time there will be displacement in the transverse direction so it should be some kind of an ellipse and it is an ellipse to start with but then you watch how the motion changes with time so i am releasing it but not uh, with zero velocity a slight push on the other side it will make a jerk but ignore that can you see how that ellipse is rotating when i started what was the mean plane of motion and what is the mean plane of motion now watch it again i start from here and see it is going mostly in this plane and now now it is going in this plane mostly roughly the plane is changing or that ellipse is rotating so i had started that time it was going like this and later on it went like this so the ellipse rotated in this direction if i give the transverse velocity towards myself see what happens see how the plane is changing how the ellipse is rotating where is the major axis it is now rotating in the opposite direction 
once again I will give it slight velocity towards myself. Mostly it is like this at this instant and now it is going the plane is changing. The ellipse itself is rotating. Okay, so the mathematics of this is a little more involved, which I will not be indicating even. But if you are interested, you can get this in this particular uh, book. It is mechanics or principles of mechanics something by the authors Sinjay and Griffiths. I told you that if I start the pendulum with the initial condition theta equal to some theta naught and v equal to 0, it goes in its original plane and if I give a transverse velocity, then it goes in some kind of an ellipse which also advances, which also rotates. But now what I am going to show you, I will release it with 0 velocity and you watch if any change in the plane of motion takes place. So, I will do three experiments and you carefully and patiently watch about the plane of its oscillation. So, first is when I am displacing it parallel to this plane made by this uh, rod here, this is stand and this thread in equilibrium position. So, this is the reference plane you can say and in this plane itself I am displacing it and I will release it. Watch for some time and see if any change in the plane of motion is noticeable. It oscillates in the same plane in which it is started that is expected, that is understandable. We did not give any velocity to start with and therefore, the torque of gravity is just oscillating it in that same plane. Let me stop it and displace it in the perpendicular plane. So, you have a vertical plane made by this rod and this thread in equilibrium position perpendicular to that I will displace it and see what happens. You have to give it some time. So far it is going in the same plane in which I started it. Continues in that plane. as expected, there was no initial velocity. So, no reason to make any displacement in the perpendicular direction. 
it goes like this. Now, in the third case, I will pull it in a direction making some 40, 45 degree type angle with that plane and then let us see what happens. So, I am taking it in some inclined direction like this and releasing. Indeed, I released it with v equal to 0 initial velocity I have not given any transverse velocity. See, it has picked up transverse velocity on its own. Now, it is almost rotating in the plane which was initially thread and this rod was making this vertical plane. It is almost rotating in that plane. The original vertical plane made by the thread and the rod. So, why did it change the plane? When I release it with zero velocity, it should continue in that same vertical plane, but it does not. At the same time, if my initial displacement is in one particular direction, it continues in one plane. If initial direction is perpendicular to that, it again continues in the same plane. But if the initial direction is somewhere else, then it starts changing the plane of rotation. So, where is that extra force coming in? Where from the transverse force is coming in? That is coming in by this knot that we have put here. It is not a point contact as such this point is really not fixed. What we have done? We have wrapped this uh, thread 3, 4 times and then put a knot here. And at the knot there is some structure, some triangular structure. And when this oscillates, that triangular structure gets deformed. And from there extra forces come and that changes the plane of motion.